If you are day trading stocks, options, and futures, you are in for a treat. In this video, I'm sharing a full, uncut recording of a live stream trading session, starting from 9.30 market open. Our options trading head coach of the Humble Trader community was leading the market open live stream, joined by hundreds of day traders. The PL percentage you see right here was a live trade taken by Adam during the live stream mentorship, crushing over 68% gains on this Tesla trade with call options. Many traders in our community also joined Adam on this live stream to analyze the market price action, identify new setups across various stocks in play, such as SPY, Roku, and CVS. If you're ready to learn and watch the reality of day trading options, this live trading session is going to show you how real, profitable traders analyze the market, execute their trading plan, and most importantly, stay disciplined during the most active morning trading sessions. Please remember to like this video down below. It's free to support this channel, especially if you want to see more free trading educational videos like this. Hello everyone, welcome back, welcome back. The market has opened up and we are seeing a bullish reaction from the SPY off the rip here. Though we are starting to see a bit of a pullback on Tesla and CVS, which are my two main focuses. So really gonna be focused on CVS coming up over these 5980s. Wanna see this demand persist over VWAP for a long off of 5980s. Same thing when it comes to Tesla, I have no interest in Tesla until we get over the 226s. So I'm looking for these 226s to get long for a nice continuation move higher. As we talked about before, I am a bit more bearish on SPY as we are under that over, well, overarching trend line. So we have a big uptrend on them. All right, so CBS starting to make its way up a little bit here. Tesla making its way down. This market is a little bit slower. I feel like it's a little laggy right now for this open. Tesla popping its way up now. Hit those 2222s. Exactly. Now we're starting to see that demand pick up here. So, my e trade is lagging. That's why I always use two platforms. Surely want to focus on these 226s. We can see this demand come up above. Looking really good. And the SPY is actually starting to turn back around under VWAP now, under those 551s. CVS falling. All right. Getting ready on Tesla here. For these 226s. Here we go. You can see the spy popping up here a bit. Oh, what's going on? I'm getting a lot of volume this morning because my platform is not enjoying this. CVS really. Picking up to that downside. That's why we're waiting. Come on. Platform's being a bit frustrating. This is why we have our other platform here. Okay, now it wants to wake up. Starting to see this nice push with Tesla here. CVS just continuing to pick up, rejecting off those 590s. All right, remember, I'm looking at these 231s. <clears throat> so we still have a bit of room to go here. E trade's killing me right now. It's only times like this that make me want to change brokers. Really want to have spy up here. 
I know I have the futures down here, but I do like analyzing the SPY on itself. The CVS is looking like it's dead, so there's really no reason. I just don't want to risk this chart getting messed up as well. So we'll start scaling some into the 230s, most likely. So just getting some orders ready if we see a big push. All right, starting to push. So I want to take a look at BCE as well. BCE is looking good. So nice, 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 nice. Spy really picking up here <laughs> as well. Coming up towards those 552s. I did have some interest getting long. This is why it's killing me. My charts don't want to update. Look at the spy here. Right. Still very bearish under this level. No, it looks like E-Trade's catching up here. And just, you know, a little piece of advice. If you're ever worried about your platform, that's why it's important to have two and you want to cross reference and make sure, you know, the price is aligning. Can't see a bit of a lag between the two, but it really is an important thing to know how to do. You need to make sure you're looking at the right data. We're going to talk about weird market moves next. Lori, stick with us. Coming up next. Get weird today, huh? I'm all about the weirdness. <laughs> stick with us. Coming up, CMO says disappointing earnings from the Dollar Tree was the last straw. Details on that next in today's top calls. This is Bloomberg. And there we go. It's a lot cleaner. Spy going for round two towards these 552s. Tesla pulling back a bit as well. See MRNA on the new high ticker. NVIDIA is starting to get some love here, though. Making our way towards this trend. We have a bit of a backside long here. Hmm, prices on the watch was messed up for CVS. Let's see. Nine eighty. What happened here? You're right. I don't know what happened there. Thanks for pointing that out. How did that happen? I don't know how that happened. Oh, that's frustrating. Okay, I fixed it now. Thanks for that heads up. And just look at CVS. And we're really just rejecting here. Okay, spy, big candle here. 945 macro. Let's pull it up. And if it's the latter, how far can this redness go? I, I think it's both. Um, so we have these industry models that we look at. It's it's across the market cap spectrum. We look at the Russell 3000, but we look at the rate of upward revisions for the, the broad. I'm seeing a nice little push on Tesla here as well. Interesting is that if you take the tech sector, the semi and semi equipment group is the only one that's in the red on the grid. And what I mean by that is you've got both negative revisions, so we're, and you've still got expensive valuations despite the pain that we've already seen. So we S and P Global Services PMI. Let me mute Bloomberg. S and P Global Services PMI for August coming in at fifty five point seven, which is better than expected from fifty five point two. Prior was fifty five point zero. Okay. So basically showing us inflation's increasing. Not by much, but by a bit. So 11 minutes to our non-manufacturing PMI. That needs to come in a bit lower. Things are, things are not looking too good for this market. I would say that. But hopefully for Tesla, it's the opposite case. And we can push into these 23150s here. So I am uh, looking at the P&L now, actually. I need to start scaling some of this out. 
Now we're just going to take some profits here on Tesla. Even though we're not quite at those 231s, I am going to take some on here off at the 230s. I am trading options, so the premiums are very up nicely um, with the screen spike here. I don't know if this is lagging now because actually I'm seeing these premiums turn around when well, the price is higher. All righty. All right. Like in Tesla. And this is the beauty of working as a team. I wouldn't even have Tesla on my watch list. Well, I did look through it, but I might have actually missed over that if we didn't have it get pointed out. So uh, definitely making my trading day better. And that's why it's important to always share what you're looking at. Right. Sometimes you might see better opportunity than I even see. Mm. Just want to make sure Tesla's not lagging behind here. So really just going to scale the rest of it here at the 231s. All right, starting to see some downside come in here. Spies just chopping around once again. This is exactly why I don't want to touch Spy. I love Spy when it's trading clean, but when it has this chop, oh, it's so hard to trade. Even as an experienced trader, it's very, very difficult to trade. And I'm not trying to be in this career to pull my hair out, right? Trading is not easy, but you can make your job a lot easier than harder. So, you know, me trying to trade SPY with current price action is essentially asking for my nice luscious hair to disappear. I don't want that to happen. Yeah. They're staying patient here to keep an eye on the premiums. Got out at a really nice fill. So, um, you know, only have 20% remaining here. So if I can squeeze an extra 20% out of it, Maybe for the runners, get around 80%. Well, that would be awesome. I should be able to achieve that if I can hit my 31 target. 231, to be specific. All right, here's that push. Premiums are looking good. Spy pushing up as well here. Okay. Well, the strongest push, I'm not really liking that. Okay, so we are getting our leg towards my spy game plan. Now, uh, we couldn't look at CVS. Though I don't believe it's come back up. Nope. Pooped. Pooped the bet on us. By the other hand, though, could be starting to set up here. I was looking at these 552s. All right, I have a question. With all the open interest for puts and calls on the SPY, does this mean that the sediment is bearish today? Or couldn't that be contracts still open from yesterday? Just wondering if we can get sentiment like that. So for myself, when it comes to open interest, right, we don't know if they bought or sold those calls. So if you have a call, right, and I want to take a bearish position, I could, and I own shares of SPY, I could sell a call, and I could take on a bearish position. So it is very hard to know whether people are selling those contracts or if they're actually just buying naked calls. And there's no way to differentiate that. So for me, I always take it as days that there's higher open interest. Usually I can expect more volatility in the market. And it's the same thing with dark pool data, right? We see these dark pool data quotes come through. You don't know if that is a long or a short position. Once again, they could be selling those options. So it's very difficult to take those as bullish or bearish. I really just take it as there is big money looking at this as you know, those trades really don't get seen unless they're bigger money. So that's how I take it.
This is just so much indecision here. Take a look at some of these high ticker names. We have Amazon. Ooh. Intraday. BSL here. It's tricky. You really have to get into that in the pre market. But that was very nice. AMD moving a bit. Ooh, just missed this one. There's another way. KKR. It's a big long-term holding I have. Let's see how they're looking. I'm going to track them. Oh, I'm very happy I didn't not watch them through that earnings report. That would have stunk. Luckily, they're back where they last were when I saw them. Very nice, KKR. Let me be trying to make their way here. Just going through some of our names from this morning on the watch list. So JetBlue ended up not quite again. We wanted it. All right, Tesla. See if we can get this leg up here with the spy. Like I do like these 551.80s. I'm already in Tesla. I have a good size on it. I'm just I I something is telling me I have to trust my gut when it's telling me. No. Um, even though it's looking good, it's just lower probability still. All right. Now we're 10 a.m. macro. It looks like it was good. Fifty-seven, five, six, five, seven. So not as bad. This is actually exactly what we needed for bullish reading. And we're getting it. Kind of brain fart of that 10 a.m. macro there. That would have been another golden one right there. Really clean here. And we're getting this push to the 531s. So I am going to scale out. Might leave like one contract or two contracts. In case we see a really big push and we reclaim this. I mean, we could see a big short squeeze here now. That's the, that's the one thing. I'm going to leave two of them. It's not a lot, but contract's still worth a couple hundred bucks. So if we can get a nice push, could be a nice steak dinner even with these runners. Ugh. I'm a little upset with myself here, kind of brain farting on the spy game plan. Lining up with the macros are just perfect, perfect, perfect. Like, I do love doing the live streams, but it is hard to trade multiple tickers, talk to you guys, keep it entertaining. Uh, I will tell you that that is for sure. But I'm getting better. I'm getting better at doing it, so. Can't complain. I cannot complain. Still an amazing morning. Righty. In these five thirty one fifties, come on. The implied volatility is just so high on Tesla. As soon as we get a red can, it pulls back 30 cents on the premiums. And more so uh, one minute. Of, of course, I like looking at the five minute, sticking to that higher time frame. So seeing the at the 553.20s here, those sellers stepping up. I do have a signify with a blue line. So I believe this is a gap level.
Yep, gap level here. Okay, now these streamers are really picking up on Tesla. Nice. So at this gap level, like I said, a lot of indecision here. There's going to be a lot of orders. So definitely could see. Yeah, I should have kept on a little bit more runners on Tesla because if we squeeze here, it's really start taking off. So gotta stay patient. And then we can listen to Bloomberg while our trades work for us. Can we take a look. Because at the end of the day, we need to realize that we can't control anything besides the game plan we create in the day, right? And besides that is how much we stick to our own word, right? Do we do the things that we tell ourselves we're going to do? We're seeing a beautiful push here now. Okay, one second before I go into my rant. I'm going to take off one of these contracts. There's my Chipotle money for two weeks right there. In Carnitas today. Ooh, again, it's a big push here. Ooh, I have not traded Tesla in a while. These contracts are amazing. Matt Miller, I'm sorry, but I got to pull you away. We're trading right now. All right. 334 is our next key level here, so we can't expect some sellers to step in. Beautiful. All right, I got very, very small piece here. Basically, no, I mean, it's still a decent amount, considering the contracts are worth a lot, but... Not that much here. Basically taking all my risk off the table. And if you're in this trade, I would be taking a lot of your risk off the table here. I mean, we just got a very nice move. About $8. So very clean. I like it. Beautiful backside long. Aligning the technicals with the news. That's how we get these A-plus setups. And these are how we get the setups that we don't really have to deal with a lot of consolidation. I mean, it's only about 10-10. So, you know, fairly smooth morning. And that is the importance of waking up early, having a game plan, being prepared to do this before it even happened. I even got a call after did my pre-market planning uh, and, you know, I was eating some breakfast quick. And, uh, you know, I quite literally, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm looking at Tesla 226s. Um, right. Making these game plans is really all we have here. We cannot control what the market does, but we can control how prepared we are. We can control if we execute. We can control if we stick to our word. Those are all within our control. So never lose focus on the things we can control. It's easy to dwell on the things we can't control. But if you want to have that edge, if you want to have a psychological edge, you need to realize there's certain things we can't control and we need to lead them be. Curious to see what video is doing. We're following suit. As I've talked about, do you have a position at them from the hundreds? More of a long term positioning. Um, so, really liking seeing these buyers stepping up off the 104s. Hopefully, they can keep persisting. The premiums are dropping down on Tesla. Quite a bit. I don't think that chart is right. Uh, so essentially, I'm just going to leave trailing stop here, right around 5.0, 500 a contract. Um, and that should be right, take us right around 231.30s. Um, you know, I don't want to give back um, too much on this. And those contracts were just trading at 620. So leave my trailing here, my trade invalidator, a C spy. Uh, turning around as well off our key level. So if 
our trades want to go to a stop out here, no issues. If not, maybe we can get our runner to continue up towards these 235s. But if we get to 235, I'm not going to swing this overnight. I just don't. That was not my game plan, so I'm not going to create that into my game plan. Just uh, Tesla has definitely broken my heart before. I've taken some very big hits on Tesla and then swinging specifically. And specifically for an earnings swing. And I know this isn't earnings, but still, uh, you know, no reason for me to really deviate seeing great returns and was more of a day trade in sizing. Um, you know, I mean, I guess I just only have a runner, but not really looking to swing this. All righty. Market is pulling back quite a bit off those 55331s here. So good job, SPY, and continuing to break my trust. You can just not respect that trend line. Things looking very heavy here. Starting to get under VWAP now. I mean, I still think CBS could be valid, potentially. Probably won't happen this week, though. Oh, no, you're so focused on trading. You're to join at 930. Possible to start a minute or two earlier. Yeah, I could start a minute or two earlier. I tried doing that, actually, today. Because usually at the open, there is a big influx and I usually get a big lag spike. So I was kind of hoping that I would avoid that lag spike after 9.30. But we may just have to deal with it. Uh, I am watching Tesla still. So a lot of your calls. Not looking to see how we react to this level. Nice. Now, especially getting under VWAP here, right? We have our trade invalidators, we have trend, we have key levels, and we have VWAP. So when it comes to our trend invalidator, where would that be? It's going to be right here. So we are still in an uptrend. Next invalidator is VWAP. We are under VWAP. And after that is our key level. So really the last line in the stand here, and you're officially a bag holder. Oh, and I'm seeing the runners are hitting new highs on the dang. Tesla, side note. As I said, these 235s, if I can get 700 a contract, that would be amazing. Let's see what we get on this push. I'm just putting order out. All right, back to the lesson. Mm -hmm. Our trading validator. So if you're still holding SPY in a long position, after we've broken under a key level, after we've broken our trend, after we've broken VWAP, you're officially a bag holder because those are all of our trading validators. Those are all signals to tell us we should be getting on this trade. And one thing about our trading validators is they will avoid us from sometimes seeing that bigger move. But what it will do is avoid giving back our profits. So really not letting those green trades go to red. And when they do start going against us, making sure that, hey, maybe we only give back a small portion as opposed to the large portion of our trade. So Tesla is just hard rejection there. Level, stay patient. So you know, really important that you're understanding you know, our trade invalidators. I think it's a very short lesson. Uh, I think it's one of the most valuable lessons that we have in the video library. I know that they have made a tremendous change in my own trading. What gave you the green light to get in on Tesla? Was it after it stayed up over the 222s level or when it passed the 226s? So on Tesla, I was really focused on this gap level. Uh, that would have been nice buying into the dip, but being how kind of negative and 
uncertain the market's been. I wasn't really feeling confident buying into the weakness here. I did want to see that demand come in, so it gave me more confidence to buy the 226s, seeing how well we respected the 222s, but I did not try to enter down here. I was really looking for us to get over the gap level, since we had good news. Over VWAP as well was another perk of the 226s. So, uh, yeah, just as soon as we came up here, um, I just pulled the trigger. In the morning, you have to be ready and you have to accept the fact that you can really take these losses. So we're starting to get this push here. Humans are picking back up. Personally, have my sell at 7.0. So if we get that push to the 235s, uh, the deltas are... Delta here. Yeah, so it should be perfect. As long as we get that push to 235, deltas are right in line. Give me that 7.0. Um, my mental math just impresses me sometimes. Let's see if Tesla can impress me as well. I'm really seeing Spy respecting that trend. Another beautiful reason why we love those trading validators. Avoid exiting the trade seeing they're still getting respected. That's a decent opportunity there. Not as clean on my finger some analysis. But my E-Trade, very clean opportunity to the 551.80s. As volatility is there, I just don't want to get too greedy. But man, these ranges. Oh, that's beautiful. See a little bit more in you here, Tesla. Yeah, Spy's really coming up these highs strong. All right, Spy looks like it's going. Let's go for a new high on the day. Oh, just kissed my premium. I need in there. 695s we just had on the ask. Come on, I'm just need a little bit more. My math was too too close. I quite literally need the 235s in order to get that 7.0 fill. I think we'll get it here. Perfecto. 715s actually. I had a limit order, so it did fill me at 7.0. Just had a big little 715 I saw go through. Perfect. Awesome, awesome trade on Tesla. Absolutely phenomenal. Beautiful. Still no trade invalidator, but um gotta stick to my plan. Gotta yeah, stick to what I said I was gonna do. As soon as I start deviating from that, lose the things I can control. Amazing. Amazing. All right. About Roku for BSL. Hey, there we go, Jonathan. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Have our GTLB. Nice little continuation today. Very nice. And Roku. I'm not going to forget about Roku. Yeah, Roku looks good. Sixty-eight thirty-eight. Yeah, just wait for these sixty. I mean, I wouldn't wait for the gap, right? So this is perfect. Is there news? Nordstrom analyst is no longer bearish. 
All right, where's my pop out? There it is. Nope, not that one. Roku shares are trading higher after Wells Fargo upgrading the stock from underweight to equal and raised its price target from 50 to 72. That's good, but I mean, 72 is not too far away, so that's not great. NFL Zone is back on the Roku platform. Kick off the NFL season with the NFL Zone on Roku. Hmm, so I know that there's been some big disputes between Disney. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar. You know, I've played sports my entire life, and I love sports, but I don't watch them as much as uh, I probably should. You know, all my friends always make fun of me that I'm clueless on a lot of these sports teams. I know the sports. I know all the rules, how to play them, but the actual players, and uh, I'm not the best at staying up to date with them. So just kind of thinking in my head why I mentioned that is if – Disney is having that issue with the TV providers, and now Roku somehow finds their way in there. That could be huge for Roku. That could be, oh my, I mean, that would be very big. Um, trying to see if there's anything here. 75. I mean, still a 75 is good. Expected move is probably very low on this on the options. Yeah, I think Roku is a great one. Very similar to how C I'm looking at CVS. I think CVS, Roku are two prime ones. We just have to wait for the day of them to work, right? Today, we had Tesla, Roku, um, CVS. I had to put Roku on there, too. Uh, just so happens that Tesla was the one that worked out today. So that's why we really got to stick to when the game plan gets validated. Right? It's very easy to enter CVS preemptively, you know, even today, right? Um, you could have entered saying, oh, we're above our trend line. But we're really, if you're trading a backside long, it needs to be over a trend line and a key level. And I always want to enter at that key level. So me entering here means I need to risk all the way down here. Me entering here means I need to risk all the way down here. Me entering here means I can risk 59.60s. And that's the difference between risking 30 cents on a trade and having to risk a dollar, right? So I'm able to take a lot more trades than these other traders who are using these wider stop losses. They're not able to enter as many positions due to the fact they have these wide stop losses. And their one trade turns into my three trades. So I like CBS still. I'll be ruined for it. I'll be ready to size into it. Roku, great find again. Got the best team. Find some more key levels here. Awesome. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. And once again, want to make sure that we're identifying your gap pivots because that's how we know what type of size we want to use. I'm always feeling more confident sizing up at my gap pivots. Another reason why on Tesla it was A, plus, I had no issues you know, using some bigger size on that. Once again, it was a gap pivot as well. Wow, what a what a day. Really sold that runner. I mean, we could still, of course, the remainder of the day start breaking back out, but it's always nice seeing some downside after we exit a position. All right. Well, looking at the market. Not really having much interest in anything else. Um, I like I like Roku. Roku might have some interest here. For sure. Although, I might just wait till tomorrow. Or even possibly next week. Depending on what the market gives us, right? Um, Spy didn't just have a nice push back towards those highs. But we are starting to pull back a little bit. CVS would have liked to just see that continuation move over 59 towards these 59.50s. But uh, it's what it is. I can't control that, unfortunately. All right. Well, if there, anyone has any questions, I'll take any last questions. And then I'm going to wrap up the live stream shortly. I got a question. Adam, may I ask you what 
would you use as a key level for Roku then? Is it just the gap level of 6831? So yeah, and that would really be where I'm looking for my entry. It's going to be that 6831. So, and the trade would be valid above there. Right? If I missed it, I could potentially look for another key level uh, to enter in on. I don't really see any like 6941s. Could, could potentially 6940s you could potentially use. Well, for the most part, you know, I'm really just going to be focused on that purple line, similar to what I did on Tesla today. Waiting for it to get here and just entering for that gap fill as well as the BSL. And Roku is going to be the same thing gap fill and BSL. Same trade I'm on BCE. Let's see how they're doing. Holding up at 36 is I'll take it. Right? Did the same thing here. Rinse and repeat, my friends. That's all we can do. Find an edge and stick to it. Yeah, Amazon, they were on the high ticker before. Oh, yeah, nice continuation. Gap too. And the Amazon gap was beautiful. This trend is invalid. Really beautiful move. I mean, it came quite literally right down to the gap and it's been bouncing right back up. Almost has that gap fill. Another reason why I absolutely love trading gaps. Gaps, backside longs, nothing else I really need in this life. Besides a beach, my dog, some good friends. In my community, of course. All my trading partners. I think I just realized you guys can even see this. Um, so this is the gap right here. On uh, Amazon, BCE. Roku, we can get this. Looking prime. And then I was just showing on Tesla as well. Here, 4563. Going for the whole gap fill is, you know, a little bit more advantageous, but catching a portion of it always seems to work out fairly well. All righty. Thank you, everyone, for joining me this morning. Thank you for all being great team members and pointing out Tesla even for me. As once again, you guys sourced that one, not me. Um, so, absolutely amazing. I hope everyone was able to catch a piece of it. If not, I hope you learned something. Mornings are definitely a bit more hectic. We have a lot more volatility, and the current market environment is not easy to trade. So this is a week that you should not be looking to force anything. This is a week you should be reflecting, more so collecting data. And if you're a newer trader, learning about these changing market conditions. The markets are always changing, and it's important to understand how you can adapt to them. And sometimes we need to adapt and realize, hey, maybe we shouldn't go out hunting today. Maybe we should just stick to the sidelines. All right. I will see everyone. Trade smart. Talk soon. Bye. You can continue to learn from the full trading tutorial videos over here. And feel free to check out the Humble Trader community using the link in the description if you're interested in learning more trading strategies and trade alongside a team of trading coaches.